Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You are watching Israeli News Live. Uh, a little bit late getting off this evening here, but we have a whirlwind of news that is going on in and around the Middle East, starting in Israel. Israel has responded today to, a, uh, to an attack, a retaliatory attack, according to Israel, on its own military forces there that were patrolling in the Golan, in the northern border there along uh, Lebanon there. And it was uh, Hezbollah who did the attack, even using anti-tank missiles uh, against the Israelis. Now, there were two Israelis killed thus far from what's being reported. RT News, uh, the, the site that we are on here, showing the uh, photo here, it says Israeli forces have struck the small Lebanese town of Wanz uh, Wazani. That was in response to the uh, to Hezbollah's strike on Israel. <clears throat> Local media reported adding that there are fears of damage and injuries. The IDF has confirmed the attack, saying it was a retaliatory fire. Uh, earlier, an explosion targeted an Israeli patrol near the front, uh, frontier. Hezbollah al-Manar television reported. Lebanon's LBCI News says that several people were injured in the shelling that followed. Israeli Defense Force spokesman Brigadier General Moti Almaz told the Jerusalem Post that two heavy armored vehicles, including a D-9 bulldozer, were hit, adding that the explosives were relatively large. We have opened uh, artillery fire and created a smoke screen to cover the area. We are con uh, in control of the incident, Almaz actually said there. Uh, according to, I believe, is Israel National News, that, that there is actually, there were two that were killed. I'm assuming this is two Israelis that were killed in this incident here. Um, uh, let's see here if I can just quickly find that on there. I, I don't see it right off. But anyway, it, it's a very serious situation that is escalating. The United Nations uh, is calling for a, a calm after this to, to cooling off of the tensions. No doubt Russia as well is concerned about the situation that is happening in Israel, to say the least. Another interesting article that came up to my attention here was Erdogan cheers Kurdish leaders' prosecution as crackdown intensifies. And by the way, the, the Turkish government, they are basically uh, genociding the Kurdish, Kurdish uh, people that are living in southern Turkey. There's been a lot of crackdown with military, uh, the, according to the Kurdish people living in the southern part of Turkey, as well as a, we know that the Turkish uh, military had gone across the border into Iraq, had attacked the Kurds there with heavy military tanks, uh, armored vehicles, etc. And according to the Kurds living in the side of Turkey, that uh, Turkey there is actually using heavy uh, military equipment, including tanks and armored personnel carriers, down in heavily uh, Kurdish populated area areas. Now, the one thing that really concerns me in all of this is why is President Barack Obama turning a blind eye to the events that are happening there in Turkey, especially in light of the fact that we know that uh, the United States actually supported the Kurds. Uh, they were supporting the Kurds at one time. By the way, you see on the screen there, they're showing you the different vehicles that are being used against the Kurdish people there. Uh, this is on uh, RT News that came out on here, uh, and, and many have been killed as a result. Uh, and also the uh, Turkish people, Erdogan has had a major crackdown against the uh, against the news agent or news reporters there in Turkey, anyone reporting anything against Turkey is arrested and tried for treason in this particular country. Now, going back to the United States involvement, if we look back, according to Time Magazine, here Iraq inv invasions poses Kurdish dilemma. According to the article right here on Time uh, Magazine, here, their online source here, the United States had justified one of the main reasons for having to go to war with Saddam Hussein many years ago was to protect the Kurds. And now, the United States, it's funny, Saddam Hussein, we justified under President Bush that we had to go and protect the Kurdish people from being genocide by Saddam Hussein. 
by gassing his own people, etc. And now we find out that news sources have come out of Turkey that says that Turkey has supplied the sarin gas that was used in Syria against Syria's uh, own people there. And of course, they blamed it on Bashar al-Assad and his forces for using the, the sarin gas. But according to, to uh, Syria, uh, Turkey's own uh, people and their government, they claimed that no, it was Turkey that made the gas for ISIS and was sent over the border to use on the Syrian people there in order to make it look as if it was Bashar al-Assad. Now we're having, we go back in time, we look on the history of the Kurds and the United States invaded uh, uh, Saddam Hussein because one, he had uh, weapons of mass destruction, supposedly, Really, it was for the oil. We all know that that's the real reason why they invaded. But they also justified the fact that they said that Saddam Hussein was genociding the Kurds, the Kurdish people. Now, the United States, who is an ally with Turkey, they sit back and allow the Turks to do the exact same thing that they accused Saddam Hussein of doing. And maybe Saddam Hussein was doing this against the Kurdish people. No doubt that may be so. But the Kurds are fighting ISIS as well as Turkey, and as well as even as we've seen in some of the video footage, they're even fighting against the special forces of the Navy SEALs that Obama has sent in, as we've seen in some of the video footage there. So what type of hypocrisy are we having? Or is it just the Obama administration was never in tune with the Bush administration? The Bush administration wanted to help the Kurds. The Obama administration wants to help annihilate the Kurds right along with the Turks. At least by turning a blind eye, that's about the, the gist of what's really being done there. Also, in other news as well, the situation has escalated in Iran, uh, in the Middle East there, concerning Saudi Arabia and Iran, after Saudi Arabia uh, killed uh, as far as a public execution for the, de for, for the uh, Shiite cleric uh, who uh, was living in Saudi Arabia. It has is, it is outraged the Iranians. The Iranian people uh, went and ransacked the, the, uh, the Saudi embassy in Iran. That infuriated the Saudi kingdom. They have uh, cut all ties with Iran, and then following them cutting the ties with Iran, Bahrain cuts diplomatic ties as well, and other, uh, other uh, nations there in the uh, Gulf states there, the... the um, the, uh, the different nations that are there besides Saudi Arabia are following suit to do the same things, cutting ties with Iran. Now, both these countries are major military powers. And at the same time, if you'll notice, what's interesting is that Russia's right there in the middle of this whole quagmire that is going on. And it's almost as if the United States is kind of pushing the enemies at one another to bring them at odds to each other so that the Middle East will up, up will just boil into a massive war there. And then Russia being caught in the middle of it is something that's very tense, a tense situation to say the least. One thing that is really concerning to me as well in all of this is I listened earlier this evening to 60 Minutes on, I think it's December the 7th when they aired, I was watching it on their YouTube channel this evening. The interview that they had with President Putin. And quite frankly, the interview was designed to try to get President Putin to stumble in his own words or to call him out to make him look like a czar or something of this nature. But more and more, as I watched the interview, it seemed, and I don't, I'm not supporting the side of Russian uh, communistic type of uh, living. I would prefer to be in a democracy, but clearly, it's obvious that 60 Minutes wanted to make President Putin look like some kind of evil bandit. And I don't say that pot can call kettle black or anything like that. We know that there's evil on both sides, definitely no doubt about it. But President Putin does have some very serious concerns of his own, especially in light of the United States building up a huge military presence all along Russia's western border in the former Soviet states. And even Putin brought out one interesting thing in the, in the uh, particular interview that I thought was fascinating. He said at the breakup of the Soviet Union, he said, which basically happened overnight, he said it left 25 million Russian people stranded in countries, states that were no longer their home. He said this uh, posed a huge problem for the Russian uh, Federation. And 
it was a major issue that we had to deal with. Um, again, many things could be said about this, but nonetheless, Putin held his own very well in the interview. And we even noticed ourselves many false things were being said there from U.S. propaganda. Now, we know Russia has its own propaganda machine as well. We're not saying that one is better than the other, but we definitely saw that uh, the interview was played to make it look like he was the bad guy. But I think the American public as well can see that Vladimir Putin is really trying to stabilize his own country with the threat of nuclear war that he is facing. And now we see the destabilization of the Middle East. And it's as if the United States just sits back pushes buttons at different countries to cause the chaos and anger that is breaking out in the Middle East, hoping that it will turn into a violent uh, situation there that will cause a major war. And Russia being there with its own military base, which the U.S. has many military bases in the Middle East, but it could end up in a war between both countries without a doubt. Russia also, or excuse me, Vladimir Putin, President Putin also made a very interesting comment about Ukraine. And it seems that he put a greater emphasis on Ukraine, on the interview that he did on 60 Minutes there, about Ukraine and what is happening in Ukraine than he did even on Syria and the protecting of Bashar al-Assad and his presidency there of the Syrian people there. Very interesting to say the least as I watched that interview there and I was very concerning to say the least because he is definitely wa definitely watching what the outcome is going to be on Ukraine. And yes, he did admit to having his own troops on the border as well, but he said it's also the fact the United States not only has its troops on their border, but also major nuclear weapons on its borders as well. Moving into another little quick topic here I wanted to share with you here, and that's Pope Francis. Pope Francis calls to end tax-exempt status of churches not helping the needy. I had a brother or sister, I forget which one, sent this to me on our Facebook page. I thought that was very interesting. It kind of remind me of Pope Benedict, who was a raiser of taxes. Now we find that Pope Francis is calling an end to the exempt status of churches not helping the needy. Remember, I said he was kind of like Judas Iscariot. Judas... He claimed that he cared for the poor, but he didn't really care for the poor. I'm sure that the Catholic Church does much to help the poor. I know that has happened for many years. But then again, if they really cared for the poor the way they say they do, why not sell the billions of dollars of gold and stocks that they have in all these companies and give it to the poor then? Why do they hoard that instead? Really, it's a kind of a hypocritical stance there. Another interesting thing here I want to bring to your attention as well. We brought this news out to you not too long ago from Charisma News magazine online. Seven Christians jailed for refusing to, to convert to Catholicism. We have a very interesting uh, uh, relationship with a brother down in Mexico that has actually contacted me after speaking about this particular article right here. And he thanked us for bringing this to the public's attention. And he said to me, Brother Steve, it is far worse than what people could ever imagine. And he said, yes, those of us that are not Catholic are facing very serious pressure from the Catholic Church. And he does claim that the Vatican does have an involvement in this situation. It's not just a rogue situation in Mexico. I believe, from what I can see in this matter, it is only a wave of the future. I've asked our brother there if he could send us some more confirmation of uh, any type of articles that he may have from Mexico. We can always translate those ourselves as well. Uh, anyway, going on into closing the news here, Chinese stock market, another brother or sister one sent this to on, on Facebook uh, on, the, on the beginning of the first of the new year of 2016, tumbled 7% on the Chinese shut it down. Uh, that was a pretty smart move to say the very least there. And the last news I wanted to bring to your attention is this standoff with the government, the federal government. And of course, the federal government, as far as I know, is not there as of yet, according to CNN's report. But they are supposed to set up a command center near uh, this standoff in Oregon. The Bundy brothers that have actually started this uh, standoff uh, in response to what they feel is being... Uh, non-fair treatment to farmers and ranchers, lands being confiscated, this one family that has been put in jail uh, that definitely seems like they were put in jail for something that does not seem right, definitely an over 
uh, over amount of jail time for, for what they called controlled burning of the land. The federal government called it burning to cover up uh, poaching. I can't say what the case is there, but one thing I will say about the Bundy family that has started this and also has called on armed militia from around the United States to come and join them in their stand in the fight there in Oregon. To me, this is definitely not the right way to handle it. I, I even wonder, is this actually a setup? Uh, whether or not the Bundy brothers are intentionally doing it themselves, if they're part of some kind of conspiracy or not, I, I'm not into that. I know that even Alex Jones has is, is stated himself, this will bring a, bring a bad name on patriots uh, that are really trying to stand for uh, citizens' rights to bear arms, etc. Uh, this will be one way that they would be able, as Alex said, to demonize the patriot movement and call it a terrorist group is with a situation such as this. Because as they have taken over a federal building, yes, they have broken the law. And I agree with Alex in this case here. This is no way to handle a situation like that if you believe that this other family that has been uh, wrongly prosecuted or whatever, take it up in every legal means avenue that is available. Going out and becoming vigilantes in the United States is definitely no way to do it. Uh, occupying a federal building is going to be a federal crime. And right now, from what I understand, there's 300 plus armed men that are there in the state of Oregon in a very remote area. Uh, we realize that, 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 that there's no one in danger as far as the people that are living in this area, but it is definitely just what the U.S. government needs to be able to uh, let this situation brew completely out of control, and the U.S. will definitely begin to lab label uh, patriot groups like this terrorist organizations. And even worse yet, because Mr. Bundy has also said that it was God that spoke to him to do this or, or led him to do this campaign, it's also going to put the Christian people into the same terrorist group organization. The, the U.S. will just lump it all into one, and then there will become a major disarming of the United States, especially if this spirals out of control. I think it's a very bad idea. I do not think that it is being handled at all in the right way. Uh, my, my heart and prayers go out for these people that are doing this, that God would put some wisdom in there. Unfortunately, they've probably stepped too far already. Uh, even if they, they end it peacefully, you can count on one thing, the government's not going to let this go unprosecuted. So someone's definitely going to be going to jail. And I think that they may realize that. And I can't imagine why Mr. Bundy actually really believed that the government is just going to back down and say, here, farmers, here's your land back. And we apologize. We didn't give you enough money or whatever the case may have been. I do, let me say this, I can understand what it's like to see the federal government seize land illegally. Of course, I wasn't alive when this happened, but I know in my own mother's family, years ago, uh, had land near Alabama, southern Alabama, near this area here, I should say. I won't say exactly where it was at, but the government came in. We had hundreds of acres of land at that time, and the government came in and deemed that it was uninhabitable for the people, and they seized the land from our family and later built a military base on that very land. Uh, of course, the military base was closed after the war and it became later became a national park. But then some lawyers, very smart and crafty, figured it out before any of our extended relatives ever knew anything about it. And they seized what land was not seized by the national government there and built houses on it to make a lot of profit. So we do understand what it's like to see the federal government seize land illegally and use it for their own benefit. Uh, so we understand in that regard there, uh, but nonetheless, this is definitely no way to handle a situation like this. I still believe the United States has a diplomatic process. It may be a failed process, it may be worthless as all get out, but violence is definitely not the way to resolve it. I say that is the same situation with the, with the cases where the policemen have overstepped their their force and used lethal force against uh, the minority of our country, our black brothers and sisters, they're wanting the people to rise up because they want to disarm the nation. They're looking for any excuse they possibly can. Don't play into 
the government's hand. I'm Stephen Benner, and you're watching Israeli News Live.